need anymore. They'll say, boys and girls, you have an appendix that you don't need anymore. That's a vestigial structure. That's proof of evolution. Well, excuse me, you do need your appendix, okay? That is stupid. The appendix is part of your immune system. If your appendix is taken out, you can still live, okay? But it increases your susceptibility to quite a few diseases. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes also. That doesn't prove you don't need them. Does it? <laughs> there are no vestigial organs. And even if there were, that would be the opposite of evolution. That's losing, not gaining. This textbook says, boys and girls, whales, and many organisms here, like a whale, retain traces of their evolutionary history. For example, the whale retains pelvic and leg bones as useless vestiges. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not true. This one says, just imagine whales walking around. It's true. These little bones right there is what they're talking about. Just imagine him walking around. I can see it now, can't you? <laughs> All he needs is a good imagination and some LSD and you'll be able to see that whale walking in real life. <laughs> this textbook says, the whale's pelvis is evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling mammals. Well, that is stupid, okay? Those bones in the whale's abdomen are essential to hold muscles that support the reproductive system. Without those bones and those special muscles, the whales cannot reproduce. This has nothing to do with walking on land. It has to do with getting more baby whales. So the author that wrote this is either ignorant of his whale anatomy and should not be writing a book about it, or he's a liar trying to push a theory off on our kids. Here, this one says, Whales once lived on land. Whales were not always sea dwellers. Modern whales show skeletal evidence of previous existence on dry land. Buried deep in a whale's hip muscles are two small bones, all that is left of the whale's pelvis and hind legs. That's stupid. The male and female bones are very different on whales. Check your whale anatomy and tear that page out of your book. Has no business being in there. This textbook says, humans have a tailbone at the end of the spine that is of no apparent use. I was debating a guy in North Alabama. He was the president of the North Alabama Atheist Association or something like that. He got up and he said, folks, we've got evidence for evolution. Humans have a tailbone they no longer need. When it was my turn, I got up and I said, Mr. Patterson, I taught biology and anatomy. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, without which you cannot perform some very valuable functions. <laughs> I will not tell you what they all are, but go read your Grace Anatomy and you can figure it out. I said, however, Mr. Patterson, if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I, Kent Hovind, will pay right now to have yours removed. <laughs> Bend over. That is stupid, folks. The tailbone is not vestigial. This one says, the coccyx, that's the tailbone, the small bone at the end of the human vertebral column has no present function and is thought to be the remainder of bones that once occupied the long tail of a tree-living ancestor. <laughs> I was taught when I went to school, man used to have a tail, but he lost it because he didn't need it. I thought, didn't need it? Have you ever thought how handy a tail would be? <laughs> have you ever come to the door with two sacks of groceries? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice, man, be able to grab that door and walk right around and get in it? <laughs> lost it because we didn't need it. Man, you could drive the car and tune the radio knob and hold the Coke at the same time. We're going to tell the kids that lobe finned fish show evolution. Yes, boys and girls, during the Devonian period, 410 million years ago, there were fish with lobe fins. What that means is a short arm and then the fin grows. Well, that's stupid, okay? The lobe finned fish are still alive. They're called the coelacanth. And when they found the first coelacanth in 1938, first folks, people didn't believe it. They said it can't be true because they died millions of years ago. When they finally proved, yes, they're still here, all they said was, wow, they survived for millions of years. <laughs> Never dawned on them to maybe question the whole theory. Never dawned on them. When Dr. Roy Mackel went to Africa and did ex expeditions on dinosaurs still alive in the African swamp, University of Chicago microbiology professor Dr. Roy Mackel wrote this book. He went over there twice, interviewed folks who've seen living dinosaurs. People who've never seen a white man. When he, when he showed them the Apatosaurus, they said, yeah, that's Mokele Mbembe. He lives out in the river. He's not friendly. Don't get close. <laughs> Dr. Mackel said, fellas, that's a dinosaur. They've been dead for 70 million years. 
The natives said, well, we're sorry, we didn't know about that. <laughs> All we know is we see them out there once in a while. So Mackle gets back, writes this book, and says, Folks, there are still some dinosaurs alive in Africa. Then he says, It's amazing, they survived for 70 million years. <laughs> never will cross his brain that maybe your basic theory is wrong. That thought will never enter his mind, I don't think. It ought to. Lobe fin fish are still alive, folks. They tell them trilobites are good index fossils for rock that is 600 million years old. Well, that's stupid, okay? There are man and a human shoe print where a guy stepped on and squashed a trilobite. How could a human step on a trilobite? Oh, if they 500 million years ago. One guy said, maybe aliens visited the planet and stepped on a trilobite. <sighs> trilobite had the most sophisticated eye ever found in nature. It's one of the first animals to evolve and it's already got the most complex eyeball. I don't think so. These index, the whole thing about index fossils is stupid, okay? There aren't any index fossils. The Graptolites are the index fossil for 410 million year old rock, and yet they're still alive right now in the South Pacific. They tell the kids the dinosaurs are index fossils for 70 million year old rock. Folks, dinosaur blood was found inside the bone. Don't you think it's going to decay in less than 70 million years? There's enormous evidence that man and dinosaurs have always lived together. We cover that for two and a half hours on video number three of our blue series of tapes. Gene Thomas, missionary friend of mine, was in the Congo swamp for 42 years as a missionary. He said, I had two pygmies in my church that killed and ate one. Yes, dinosaurs are still alive. California, 1925, this thing washed up on the beach called California's Nessie. Laid there on the beach and rotted away. Here's a guy behind it with a rifle. In the front you can see the critter's head, neck going off to the right. The neck was 20 feet long. One atheist wrote me a letter and said, Hovind, you're so stupid. Don't you know that was a whale? Show me any neck on a whale, would you please? <laughs> no, I think dinosaurs have always lived with man. They were called dragons for most of history. People killed most of them. There could be a few still around. It wouldn't affect me at all. Okay? I don't think there's a lot of them, but there could be a few still out there. They changed the name in 1841 to Dinosaur. That's all that happened. And the man exterminated most of them. They mentioned in the Bible. We cover all that in video number three. They're going to tell the kids, we've got evidence for evolution. It works by natural selection. Well, yeah, natural selection works. But see, evolution is based on two faulty assumptions. Number one, they say mutations make something new. That's never been observed. And natural selection makes it survive. That's never been observed. That sounds good theoretically, but it's never been observed. Mutations happen, there's no question, okay? Thousands and thousands of mutation happen. mutations happen. But even guys like Pierre Gross will say, no matter how numerous they may be, mutations do not produce any kind of evolution. They're only scrambling existing information. They're not adding anything new. Here's a five-legged bull. That's a mutant. There's no new information added. Doesn't the bull already have the gene code to make a leg? It just built one in the wrong place, that's all. This is not new information, this is scrambled information. That's not new. There's a short-legged sheep. He's the first one the wolf is going to catch. <laughs> go, boys, go. Here comes the wolf. <laughs> uh, Herman didn't make it. Here's a two-headed turtle. That's a mutant. Not ninja, but he's mutant. He's going to freeze first winter. Nobody makes a double neck turtleneck sweater. I've never seen one. I've been looking. See, a mutation is scrambling information that already exists. It's like you can take the letters from the word Christmas and get all sorts of different words, scrambling them up. But you never get Xerox, Zebra, or Queen. The letters aren't available. And a mutation does not give you new information. It scrambles existing information. This textbook shows the kids a four-wing fly. Look what it says now, kids. You've got to be careful. You'll be tricked on this one. Normal fruit flies have two wings. This mutant has four. This rare mutation, like most mutations, is harmful. Look what it says. Beneficial mutations are the raw material for natural selection. Oh, why didn't they show us one? Why did they show us an example of a bad mutation and tell us that good ones is how it works? Show me a good one. You know why nobody's ever shown a good mutation? Because nobody's ever seen a good mutation. One professor I was debating said, I know a good mutation. He said, people in Africa that get sickle cell anemia cannot get malaria. <laughs> wow, that's like saying, if you cut off your legs, you can't.